President Trump has said that NAFTA was the worst trade deal ever made and that he's fixed it with, with this new treaty. As a proponent of the original uh, treaty, can, can you speak to how, whether this is a very different treaty in fact? Well, I think, first of all, I would emphasize that this is a very good result, certainly for Mexico, but it's a very good result for the NAFTA partners, for Canada, for the United States, and for Mexico. Uh, I think at the outset I would emphasize three points. One, it gives certainty to our trade and investment relations among the partners, something that it's, uh, I, I would say, needed. Uh, secondly, it, it prompts North America to continue to be the most competitive region in the world, and that's important, because uh, the agreement is not only about how much we trade uh, among the partners and how much we invest uh, among one, you know, among ourselves, but it's also about how do we, uh, how can we better produce together to export to other regions of the world, and I think that the, the treaty does that. So it's essentially about growing the relationships that NAFTA established. It's not necessarily well, after, different. After 25 years, it's only natural that there were things that needed to be updated, changed, modernized, and improved. And uh, that uh, the agreement needed to be modernized. So for example, we incorporated better provisions with respect to e-commerce, something that was not as important and prevalent 25 years ago. And that's something that uh, benefits the Cree nations. So that's certainly an improvement. That's something that changed. We also, uh, for example, uh, on the auto industry, uh, there was an intent uh, to make sure that we were, uh, you know, as a region, better positioned to attract investment. And that the North American region would, uh, you know, produce more and better cars to export to other regions of the world. What about in terms of agriculture? I know the original NAFTA in contributed in part to some of the waves of illegal immigration that we saw in the 90s because of the conditions that it created for Mexico's small farmers, the campesinos. Is this treaty different in regards to these small farmers? Well, I, I would beg to differ from that point of view. I'm not sure that there is a very clear and evident causation uh, between that part of you know, immigration from the ag sector in Mexico uh, and, and the North American Free Trade Agreement. I, uh, I, I don't think that necessarily is the case. But what I about think the plummeting that prices has been, that we saw for but commodities? I, but, which but plummeting prices are not the result of the trade agreement. They are the result of the market conditions worldwide. But there will be a tendency towards industrialization. And it is a reality that Mexico's small farmers were unable to compete, at least in, the, in maize with corn, with the U.S.'s heavily subsidized agriculture industry. Is, is this something well, that is addressed? But, but see, uh, anyway, the, the, there's a whole debate about that. And uh, again, I would, I, I think that I would, you know, I would just offer a different view. Um, I'm not saying that everything is good and dandy on the Mexican agricultural sector. It would certainly face a lot of challenges. But it depends on who you ask. Some small producers in Mexico have managed to become very successful in certain products, like tomato, where we have a competitive advantage, like tomato, like avocados and uh, other types of vegetables. I think that the, the challenges that the, the Mexico face on the agriculture sector are there and uh, I need to be addressed, but I'm not so sure that it is through, um, you know, certainly not by restricting trade that that will solve the problem. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for your Thank time. You. Thank Good you very luck. much. My pleasure. Thank you.